Ray understand the importance of revitalizing the equipment manufacturing industry. Why should the equipment manufacturing industry be revitalized? The first is the needs of the development of the situation. In the past two years, the industrialization process has shown a trend of development of heavy and chemical industries, but a large amount of investment tends to be close to the beginning of energy and raw materials in the industrial chain. Overheated investment in steel, alumina, cement and other industries has appeared due to excessive consumption. Energy, causing environmental pollution, has led to a lot of debates about what road the industry chooses. In fact, it is the equipment manufacturing industry that truly reflects the strength of a country and has a strong driving force in the industrial chain. The world's economic powers such as the United States and Japan attach great importance to the development of their own equipment industry and have extremely complete and effective methods for revitalization. To build our own competitiveness, we must revitalize the equipment industry. The second is that the status quo of the equipment manufacturing industry must be changed. After countless years of development, the equipment manufacturing industry has made remarkable achievements and formed an industrial system with a complete range, a considerable scale and a certain level, and has become an important pillar industry for the development of the world economy. However, the development of the equipment manufacturing industry in some countries is still in a passive state, with weak independent innovation capabilities, high external dependence, irrational industrial structure, weak international competitiveness, and low overall quality, and cannot meet the needs of national economic development and international competition. Therefore, revitalization has become the main theme of the equipment industry in the new century. The raw rubber has a certain degree of elasticity. In order to facilitate the process operation, it is necessary to reduce the elasticity of the raw rubber, increase the plasticity, and make it a flexible plastic compound. Generally, there are open mixer plasticizing, internal mixer plasticizing and extruder plasticizing, etc. The internal mixer plasticizing is used. Batching is the process of accurately weighing and preparing various raw and auxiliary materials for rubber according to the requirements of the formula table. It is an important process of rubber mixing. The accuracy of the material weighing will directly affect the processing performance of the rubber. The purpose of mixing is to evenly disperse the compounding agent in the raw rubber to obtain a mixed rubber of uniform quality. Make the rubber material have suitable plasticity to ensure smooth processing. The tread is pressed out. The hot melted rubber is processed by an extruder. The rubber passes through the template at the exit of the extruder head to form a rubber strip with a tread section and shape. This process is called tread pressing out. Tread extrusion process, heat refining, rubber supply, extrusion, marking, cooling, cut to length, weighing inspection, storage. The calendaring of the curtain canvas is to attach the white-green cord as the carcass skeleton material with glue on both sides, so that the skeleton material becomes an elastic body that can be manipulated, fitted and formed. At present, the calendaring method has two sides sticking glue, one side rubbing glue and one side sticking glue and pressure sticking glue. The process of putting the semi-finished products of the various parts of the tire on the forming machine and synthesizing a complete tire is called tire building. The molding quality has a great influence on the quality of the outer tire because it has many manual operations and complicated procedures. If the cloth tube is deflected during the operation, there are bubbles between the cloth layers, the steel ring is distorted, and the tread cushion is distorted, or should present quality problems such as whiteness, sundries, etc., which will cause shoulder voids, shoulder cracks, delamination, and steel wire pulling problems after vulcanization or during use. Tire vulcanization is the last process in tire manufacturing and it is also a process that has a decisive influence on the main physical properties of the finished product. Usually the tire blank is placed in a model with a certain contour and pattern. 
On the one hand, steam passes through the model, and on the other hand, the superheated water enters the water tire or the bladder, so that both the inside and outside of the tire are heated and vulcanized. Tire retreading technology is a technology that retreads tires that have been worn out or damaged by other reasons, so that they can be used again. This technology includes top turning, shoulder turning, and full turning. This technology has many applications in foreign countries. Due to the poor quality of the technology used by some bad businesses or the use of inferior materials, the quality of retreaded tires is low, which affects traffic safety and even causes traffic accidents. As a result, the domestic market does not trust retreaded tires and the market conditions are poor. Refining from waste tires The technology associated with waste tires is a technology for refining fuel from waste tires by heating, pressurizing, adding catalysts, etc. This technology, if simple and cheap equipment is used, is like most wind turbines have a constant by speed. The due speed at the end of the rotor blade is 64 meters s, and the speed at the axis is zero. The speed at a quarter of the blade length from the axis is 16 meters s. The yellow belt in the picture is blown more towards the back of the wind turbine than the red belt. This is obvious because the speed of the blade tip is 8 times the speed of the wind hitting the front of the wind turbine. The rotor blades of large wind turbines are usually spiral. Look at the rotor blades and move towards the root of the blades until you reach the center of the rotor. You will find that the wind enters from a very steep angle, much steeper than the usual wind direction on the ground. If the blade is hit from a particularly steep angle, the rotor blade will stop running. Therefore, the rotor blades need to be designed in a spiral shape to ensure that the blades behind the blades are pushed away along the wind direction on the ground. Engine room The engine room contains the key equipment of the wind turbine, including gearboxes and generators. Maintenance personnel can enter the nacelle through the wind turbine tower. The left end of the nacelle is the rotor of the wind turbine, namely the rotor blades and shaft. Rotor blades catch the wind and transmit it to the rotor axis. On a modern 600 kW wind turbine, the measured length of each rotor blade is about 20 meters, and it is designed to resemble the wings of an airplane. Shaft The rotor shaft is attached to the low-speed shaft of the wind turbine. Low-speed shaft The low-speed shaft of the wind motor connects the rotor shaft to the gearbox. On a modern 600 kW wind turbine, the rotor speed is quite slow, about 19 to 30 revolutions per minute. There are ducts for the hydraulic system in the shaft to stimulate the operation of the aerodynamic brake. Gearbox The left side of the gearbox is the low speed shaft, which can increase the speed of the high speed shaft to 50 times that of the low speed shaft. High speed shaft and its mechanical brake The high speed shaft runs at 1500 revolutions per minute and drives the generator.